All right, so when we left off, I had gone over these four different meanings of the word is and paid in particular attention to this fourth definition that Danto has noticed, where he says, ah, you can use this is of artistic identification. So how is that supposed to work? Well, so let's look at an example that, that he gives. If you look at this, this painting by Bruegel in 1560, this is this landscape depicting the fall of Icarus. And uh, if you know your Greek mythology, uh, there's the story of Icarus that comes from the ancient Greeks about how Icarus's father Daedalus made these wings out of, out of uh, wax and other things. And they allowed themselves to fly. Uh, and Daedalus told Icarus, well, just be careful when we're flying here. Don't go too high because then you'll get too close to the sun. The sun will, will melt the wax and the feathers will fall off and you'll no longer be able to fly. And Icarus got too confident, went too high, the wax melted off, and he fell down into the sea. And so this is depicting the fall of Icarus, and you can see, ah, right there, that is Icarus, right down here in the lower right corner. In fact, you could say, yeah, look, this little, this dab of, of paint down here, that is Icarus. And what Danto is saying is, aha, See how I use the word is there? That is the is of artistic identification. When I say that dab of paint is Icarus, I'm not claiming that it's the that that dab of paint is equal to Icarus or is identical to Icarus. No, that would be ridiculous. Icarus is this mythological person and the, that is a dab of paint. It's not a person. Uh, I'm not using the is of predication. I'm not saying that this dab of paint has the property of being Icarus. No, I'm saying something more. I'm saying, look, you can identify artistically this dab of paint with Icarus. So I'm using the is of, art of artistic identification. So now what's cool is that Dante thinks he can use this is of artistic identification to give a definition of art. So here's his definition. It's just a necessary condition on being an artwork that some part or property of that, that artwork must be picked out by a sentence that uses the is of artistic identification. So for example, Back in this painting, we can say, look, this painting is an artwork because there's some part of it, namely this dab of paint here, that we can use to uh, w w in a sentence with the is of artistic identification. I can say, this dab of paint is Icarus, or no, this white uh, collection of paint over here, that is a sheep. Those are all uses of the is of artistic identification. And for something to be an artwork, some part of it must be picked out uh, by this is of artistic identification. And so if this is a necessary condition on what it takes to be a work of art, now we have a way of solving that problem we started out with, where, how, where we were asking, how can you separate beds that are artworks from beds that are not artworks? Well, you can see here with these paintings of beds, you can say, well, look, some part of these uh, is characterized by the is of artistic identification. This uh, stretch of paint over here is a pillow. This bit of, of, of black paint over here is part of the headboard. I'm using the is of artistic identification there. Uh, we can do the same thing with Van Gogh's painting of a bed. The, these yellow bits of paint are part of the footboard. I'm using the R of artistic identification there. Uh, you can do the same thing with Robert Rauschenberg's bed, though. This up here is a pillow. I'm not using the is of predication there or the is of existence. I'm using the is of artistic identification, according to Danto. So even though this thing here is a pillow in the sense of predication, it's got this property of being a pillow, it also is a pillow in the sense of artistic identification. Same thing with Robert Rauschenberg.